We want to welcome you, those that are listening, to um, uh, a, a new episode of Kingdom Conversations. Um, the last one we did this, it's been fun, though. I mean, I think these are happening when they need to, but the last one of these that happened was in September of this year, and uh, I shot a text to uh, Pops, uh, I don't know, a few weeks ago, I guess, and just said, hey, I think it's, if, you, if you're if you cool to do one, let's do one, and we've wanted to do more of them, but I think they come at the right time. So um, we're just excited about, we've literally just gotten through fall, we're now into winter and Christmas time, which is your favorite time of the year. Absolutely. No question. And, uh, and so we're we're just excited about what God is doing, but we've come out of a time sort of where, at least here at home, you've been sort of reinforcing culture, infrastructure, all of those things. And uh, well, let me. Well, before I get into that, how are you doing? I'm great. <laughs> oh, we're great. Yeah, yeah, good. we're great. We're loving good. life, man. Good, it's good, awesome. good, good, awesome. good. Yeah. You bought a new house. Bought a new house. Closed on it. Um, Last Thursday, yeah, moved Saturday between yep. rainstorms, yes. and um, yeah, and we're in, and because of me, not because of the rest of the family, the house is completely finished. There's no boxes to be unloaded. Come on, Judah might have one or two because he has to have stuff in the exact right spot. Yeah, um, but other than that, I'm in the garage. You can park the cars in the garage now. It's not full That's of boxes, awesome. and yes, it's we got a few pictures to hang and things, but uh. Other than that, yeah, we're moved in, been able to grill out the last two nights, and uh, so we are, we're rocking and rolling. It's been good. Wow. It's been awesome. really, really good. Awesome. That's for the. Uh, it's a cool story. I'll let him tell that at another time, but maybe or what. But it's a cool story how the Lord gave you that property. Yeah, crazy man. We've got a we've got a spiritual son here in the family. Uh, two of them actually that together own a real estate brokerage called yeah. Wellhouse. And I don't even I wouldn't even be able to venture to guess how many people from our church work for Wellhouse. Uh, no, no. But it is a bunch. Yes. And then there's a bunch of people who don't go to the church. It's just was this small little thing. I mean, even one of the partners was working a second job when we got here. Yeah. And it's just exploded. And um he we were riding on the Ty, were you with us riding on the Ranger? Went, went by yeah, Ty was oh, with awesome. me and we were riding on my Polaris Ranger, which I do pretty much every night. Sure. Uh, it's kind of my evening devotional yep. time, watch the sun set from the ranger. And um, and me and the Holy Spirit, probably Cody Johnson, usually who I'm listening to on there. So hey, you, I just you fa- like some Cody Johnson. Hey, I just – I'm not a huge country guy. Yeah, I know you're not. Yeah. But I just found him. Yeah. And – the boy's another level. Uh, it's another level. Yeah, he's my favorite. He's I, my I've favorite. talked to my wife because I was like, I'm not a concert guy either. I know you you enjoy yes. concerts. Yes. I enjoy his concerts. Yes. But I'm not really a concert guy. Yeah. And I told my wife, I said, I'd go watch him though. Yeah, I've so seen, said, I've seen you him have? four times. Oh, wow. So he was, this is a total side story, but it's great. Go, go, go. He, when we found Cody, he would do, you know, my wife and I for over 10 years every year gone to the National Finals Rodeo yep. in Las Vegas yep. as a Christmas gift to each other. Well, they do a buckle presentation after every round. That's a 10-round rodeo. They okay. give away $10 million in 10 days. Wow. Top 15 in each. I put my rodeo announcer voice on. We got the top 15 <laughs> in each event coming back tonight. So, uh, okay. But after the rodeo each night, they present the buckle to the go-round go winners in each event. And Cody was not famous except to the kind of the rodeo crowd because he was a rodeo guy. And he'd, oh. he'd play his guitar on the back of his pickup truck and sell burned CDs. Like, literally. Wow. Literally. And he was the the kind of side performer at the buckle presentations at the South Point in Las Vegas. Wow. So after the rodeo, if you went to the buckle presentation, you'd get to hear him. Or there was another guy named Aaron Watson. And, and Cody would do five nights and Aaron Watson would do five nights. And I remember listening to him and going, he won't be doing this for long. Man. He is legit. So we got to see him several times there over the years. Sure. And then me and Judah went to a concert by ourselves. That was Cody Johnson and Luke Combs, okay. two of our favorites. Yep. And so we've seen him there. So I've seen him quite a few times and have been book, was booked to see him twice during COVID, and it got canceled. Okay. And then when they rescheduled it, it was on a revival weekend. We weren't able to go. But but we are we are going to go again this year. We're gonna go I was again. hoping, you know, when I found him, it seemed like when I started looking him up, and then I, it seems like his level of popularity now is almost demanding that he be in big venues. It is, yeah, like, like arenas almost. Well, when me when Judah and I went and saw him, he was actually opening for Luke Combs, and now he's wow. he's he ain't opening for anybody. So, but so so something about his what he had, what he has, his sort of deal. 
Yeah. I, 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 there was something in me that would almost want to see him in a smaller, like a, a thousand exactly. seat setting. Yeah, it'd be really like cool. A theater really setting, cool. you know what I mean? Well, we'll book him here. Get him, in, get him in at the church. I was, Come I'll on. tell you a cool story. Last year, when I was coming home from hunting in Texas, uh, uh, our family's from s- extreme southwest Louisiana yeah. originally. And um, we still have some property there. And so I was going through to check on it and, um, and and just look over the property, make sure everything was working. Just it's just some empty acreage, and um, uh, and so when I'm I'm driving there, the route that I come from the ranch takes me through Huntsville, Texas. Okay. Um, and I get to Huntsville, Texas, and there's a there's the biggest prison in Texas is in Huntsville. It's kind of what Huntsville's known for. Okay. But Cody's from Huntsville and was a hmm. prison guard. Huh. At the prison, and his wife literally, if I know the story right, remember the story right, encouraged him to go out. And launch out into music. Wow! Um, and he did. I mean, literally did the play in the bars, play in the rodeos, play yeah. in the county fairs, yeah. and and it just exploded for him. But um, I'm driving through there, not even thinking about anything. All of a sudden, I begin to weep, and I realize I'm driving through Huntsville, Texas, and I've got Cody Johnson playing uh-huh. on the radio, and I'm weeping in the presence of the Lord. Yeah. And ever since then, I don't I don't know Cody. I kn- I know. Uh, a guy who used to work. I know a guy who knows a guy who used to work closely with sure. him. But it, ever since he's been on my heart, I just yep. think there's a purity to him. I he, do too. He'll release a gospel song from time to time on his projects, and uh, nothing is is out of pocket. Nothing's vulgar. Nothing's yep. explicit. Just has a real family orientation. I believe he's a kingdom man. I do too. And um, and so I I'm, I believe we'll be able to connect one day. But there's really a song thankful. on his new. There's multiple songs on his newest record. Um. From my girls love the song "The Painter." Yeah, talking about his wife. Exactly. Uh, then he's got one called "Make Me a Mop." But there's one mm-hmm. that I love called "Dirt Cheap." <laughs> yeah, you can't buy that kind you of dirt. That's his that newest kind of single. It's, it's, oh, it's exploded. It? Yeah. Okay, yeah, I didn't yeah. know that. That my son Elijah. That's his favorite song. Yeah. He loves it. He's just so Elijah is a writer. He writes yeah, songs, of course. so he appreciates the whole lyrical side of yes. that. And he's like, Dad, this is like brilliantly written. Yeah. Um, I love that song. Uh, He's got he's got another one on there um, uh, called Whiskey Bent, uh-huh. and it says I'm just trying to straighten yep. out what Whiskey, what whiskey Bent is absolutely yep. phenomenal. So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's how we got on the Cody Johnson, <laughs> how we got on the Cody no, Johnson but kick. But. I love I love that um, that Dirt Cheap song just because to me when you're saying like he's a king to man, it, it it just it it leaks of legacy. Yeah, he's the, the land like, matters. He, yeah, he, the land yeah. matters. The little my daughter Come with on. the bow in her hair right Come there. On. Yeah, that stuff will get you. Come on. And Come I, on. Yeah, I love I love that song too. But the 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 the, the question on the property we were driving by. Matt and Destiny White, yes, um, who are the he's the broker for Wellhouse Realty. We were driving by, and there were some trucks parked on the side of the road. And Ty and I were like, "What's going on there?" And so we whipped the Ranger back around, and we saw Matt White standing out in the field. And he, Matt does not. I don't think he has the ability to not be happy. Right, he's just full of joy all it's the time. True. But he looked a little dejected. And we pulled mm. up, and he was out there with the people that were letting him know that this lot he had bought, he'd spent. Twenty five thousand dollars on house plans mm-hmm. was could not be built on. It it was too wet. Wow. So we just prayed, man. We God's going to give you something better. Sure. So he comes to me to give me the testimony that he found this lot right by the church, and um and he was showing me the lot and on the plot. And I said, "What's crazy?" As I said, "I ride up and down that road every night, and um I've asked the Lord. There's a piece of property there it has a has a." A dirt driveway runs off the paved road. Mm -hmm. You can't see the house, so I have never seen the house. Mm -hmm. So I don't even know what's back there. But I know in my heart I was intrigued by that property. And I said, if that one ever comes up for sale, if you hear word of that one ever coming up for sale, I'd love to look at it. Mm -hmm. It literally joins the church property. Mm -hmm. And um, But I've never seen the house. And so he said, well, I know the lady who was the broker who sold that house to the couple that owns it now. They just bought it in 2021. So there's no oh, sense that they're that. gonna sell it. Oh wow, by I didn't any know means. That. Okay. Yeah. And um he said, well, I'll call him and ask him. I said, Well, it's not for sale. He said, Well, it doesn't cost anything to that's just kind of how Matt is sure. to call. He calls and the people said, Yeah, we'd we'd let them look at it. You know, for the right price, we'd be we might be willing to sell. Sure. That was on a Thursday. We looked at it on a Sunday and bought it on a Sunday, and that's been less than a month ago. Wow. And we're moved in now. I think it was a tremendous blessing for that family, Absolutely. military family, yeah. that was able to be a blessing for them financially. And it's a dream piece of property for us and yeah. for our boys. Well, like I said, we didn't know what the house looked like. 
And we thought maybe we would even keep the house on it, use it as a guest house. We used to have a bunk house back in South Carolina Absolutely. that you know well. You and yes, your family stay there a lot. Yep. And um, uh, but but we thought maybe we use it as a guest house and build on the property because it has some acreage. Um, and then we got there and we're like, oh my lord, we love the house, and uh, we wouldn't change anything about the house. Come I think on. we're expanding one closet. Wow. is the only thing we're doing to the whole house wow. and um, adding it. We'll, we'll close in part of the garage eventually. Um, so it was just a tremendous thing of, from the Lord. Literally, wow. I would drive by that place and say, Lord, if one day I want to I want to own that piece of wow. property, not even knowing what was back there. And wow. now we live there. So wow. quite Amazing. a story. And Matt White got a way better lot right. than the lot that was too yeah. wet for him to yeah. build on. And I think he's going to put a boat storage unit on the other lot. It'll end up making him money. He's one of those kind of people. Absolutely. He's like a cat, lands on his feet and ends, ends up making, yeah. m- making more money on the other side of it. So <laughs> yeah. I love it. Yeah. And then Ty bought a lot over there. Ty is there. going to be my neighbor. Yeah. Yep. Ty England is going to be my neighbor. The fire pit will be burning. There will be a shortage of available firewood in Mobile County <laughs> when he gets out there. Uh, Matt and Destiny will be our other neighbors. That's awesome. Wow. And um, even believing for some other people in the kingdom family here. To, wow. There's one other lot available there. We'd like to see one of them get that. So, so cool. Yeah. Really, really, really Amazing. excited. I can, Amazing. I can just swing around on the Polaris Ranger and be at church in about three minutes from my house. So. It's about an eighth of a mile uh, wow. to the church to the new property. There's now, something significant about that, isn't there? It is. Being, it it being is. that close, or it something is. being joined like that. I There's never, something. you know, Brenna. I would have in another time in my life. I'd have thought that sounds terrible. Right. Being at the church is accessible all the time. You're just at work. You feel like you're right. at work all right. the time. That's so changed in my heart, even in moving to Mobile. Yeah. Uh, I want to be as close to this building and this property as I can to yes. walk it every day to. To pray, be able to to be able to run in the evening. You know, Elijah came up here the other night just from the house. He just said, "I'm going to go up to the church and pray." Yep. And uh, so being able to do that is just a really, really an amazing thing, and it's something I wanted. My wife had the wisdom to say, "You probably don't need to be on the actual church property, right? Uh, just just because of the traffic and people knowing that you're there." Of course, uh, I don't mean that like I'm a celebrity sense, but you know what I mean. No, it's just it's practically, just, it's that practically makes sense. that's probably not yes. the best situation. Sure. Her knowing my makeup, sure, and how much I love privacy, yeah. and quiet, and stars, and yes. Uh, so being able to be this close is literally. The, the the property we're dreaming of purchasing here for the church is yes. about 400 more acres than what we have, 390-something acres. Mm. And this is the only piece of land that was cut out of that original piece is where this house sits. Wow. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit said, if you'll, if you'll purchase this piece, you'll get the rest. Come of it. on. So, yeah. So that's that's wow. where we are, and I do wow. love I love being that close to the church. I can actually I can actually cut through the woods and be at the church in in no time, which is wow. my vibe. Absolutely. So yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. we're we're thrilled. Yeah. Mama's happy. She's got a got her her best kitchen she's ever had. Come on, and she's pumped about that. Come and on. the boys each have their own uh, not shower tub combo, but they got their own stand up showers Come with on. the oh and they're fired up yeah they're fired up wow. so yeah they're they're loving life we got an outdoor shower so i used that the first three days i was there i didn't take a shower in the house i just took a shower in the yard and with the outdoor shower it's got I hot water that. out there yeah Heck i got yeah. me some body wash on on top of a bug zapper Heck if, if yeah. that's not a jeff foxworthy joke wait now when <laughs> i was a boy when i was a boy um my granddad had one of those at his house we, and when we'd go up there and yep. play, as kids at pool, and I we never took we oh, no. always outside. Oh yeah, I'm outside the, the first night outside. we're there. First night we spend the night at the house, I'm outside. Everybody's I looking for me. I'm outside taking a shower love, in the yard. I love, it's beautiful. I love that. Yep, yep. I love that. Yep. Well, that's a good break from the neighborhood you've been in. Yeah, for, for sure. those of you that sure. don't know, if you listen, he's uh, pops has been in a. If you knew his personality, how much he loves privacy and land, and he's been in a neighborhood where, and, and yeah. it was good. Yeah, it, it was, was good. We're, got not, us we're here. not ungrateful. That's what for we it. say. It got yeah, us here. Got us yeah, here. yeah, got you here. But uh, it definitely wasn't your float to walk out and see your neighbors five feet from no, you. No, it so. wasn't. And, that, and I had was amazing. <laughs> I had a wonderful, amazing neighbors. Sure. But the way that my mind works, if if you catch me when I'm in the middle of processing something, yes. like I'm hearing from the Lord, yes. or I'm walking. With the Lord, or I'm, I've been writing, or something. You, you can run into me. You think I'm rude? Yes. And I don't mean to be that way, but of I'm course. not going to interrupt what I believe I'm hearing. So I can chit chat about, you know, the weather and your grass Absolutely. and your things that neighbors talk about yes, that are just of really 
shallow, insignificant conversations of course. that you feel like you you should have with your neighbors. Of course, um, it's just I'm I'm not really wired that way. I can be that way if I don't have anything else going on, or if I'm if I'm planning. But a lot of times, you know, you catch me walking to the mailbox. That's more, what's on my mind is not actually what's yeah. in that mailbox, you yeah. know. Yeah. And so, uh, Ed, this is a much 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 better fit for us. Do you so. do you think that do you think that that is a um, that is a personality. Do you, do you think that that is a personality bend, mm-hmm. or do you think that? Uh, and forgive the language; I don't know a better language to use. But but it it um, it is somehow connected to the call of God on your life, or do you feel like that's more personality, or I, do you feel like that's more? I like, don't because I don't think I was that way before. Okay, I mean I was social when you know before I yeah. said yes to this. Yeah, I was social. I was with friends all the time. I had best buddies that I wow. ran around with. I sure. Had, my, I believe that my personality has adapted to my assignment in a lot mm. of ways. And mm. uh, I don't, uh, you know, I've never, I don't think a whole lot about that kind of stuff. But it, when you ask the question, even, I think it's pretty clear in my heart to say that uh, the contemplative side of me uh, really demands quiet in a way that I have to have that carved out time, you know, even before I, which, which I'm never, I'm never, unless it's a Tuesday morning, we have a large prayer meeting. I'm usually in the sanctuary with no more than three, four, five people maybe praying mm-hmm. with me. Mm-hmm. And those are staff people, other mm-hmm. leaders. I love that. And I think you're gracious to do that. Cause he, I think yeah. you remember when I first came, I was like, are you cool that people that other people are in there? Yes. Yeah. I am. I, I am. Uh, that doesn't, that doesn't bother me. That's, that's their space as much as sure. it's my space. Sure. But I have to have, a significant amount of time at home in the morning, yes, quiet before I even come up here, yes. No, and I'm not really going to be interrupted up here, but I, I have to have that space where I, whew, man, where I I get up in the morning and there's a fresh yes in my heart come to on. walk with Him throughout the day and come to on. honor the day that is before me, and to know that I get to host presence, man, not just on a Friday night, but I get yes. to walk with Him in this way and. To walk on that new land and just sanctify it, set it apart for the Lord, to know encounters for me and my children, and one day my children's children on that mm. ground that'll be sacred, holy to the Lord. And so, I do think that I was. If you went back and and you know talked with people that I hung out with in my in my twenties, maybe even in my early thirties, um, they would. They, I'm a lot different. Than I was mm. in the sense of I had a, I had a social things going on all the time. I was I didn't I wasn't alone a whole whole lot, uh, and now um, you know it's just changed. It's changed. I think some of the things that I'm being invited to hear, yes, um, they're they're just so far, Bryn, off the grid of this Western evangelical stuff that I grew up in that I think I have to be able to, to step away, to process, to, yeah. to let the Holy spirit work those things out in my heart. Um, knowing that I've been given an assignment to help other people find their way out, uh, to be a bridge in a sense, to help other people yes. find their way out of, of the course. captivity Absolutely. of that legalism. Yeah, I just think it requires it. So I think my, my personality in a lot of ways has adapted to the assignment on, on my life. And to me, to me, when you're saying that, it seems like it demands that assignment demands like that. What would seem to some people seemingly be like a quiet devotional time. Uh huh. Yeah. Be, has to become your lifestyle. Yeah. Right. Yes. Where it, yes. It moves into where like your life then becomes absolutely a. A sort of a, a space it is. where he yep. speaks and you respond yep. Yep. instead of just, hey, I have some good time with God right. during right. the day. And know? I think that's I think that's the tension of responsibility. Right. And and that literally I could justify being on the phone nonstop. I could justify sure. being in meetings in this office nonstop. And yes. I do both of those. Yes, of course. You know, um, but I, I, I've had to understand that uh, in order for me to be who I'm ultimately designed to be, that my life has to look a little bit more cloistered. It has to look a little bit more. Um, I would say it like this: I have to be a. I have to be a little bit more jealous. Yes. Uh, for time with him, 
not yes. working for him, but spending time with him, not just because yes. I can I have a I was raised with a real strong work ethic, sense of duty consciousness. So it's easy for me to kind of justify going, well, I'm real busy. I'm real busy. Well, you can do that. And then you get days down the road and realize I haven't really given undivided attention to the Lord. And um, I, I'm I'm aware of that in my own heart in a mm-hmm. unique way. Mm-hmm. I can feel that. Uh um, it's probably Bill Johnson because anytime I'm telling a good story, it usually goes back to Bill Johnson. <laughs> but um, Bill Johnson, Cody Johnson, maybe it's a Johnson thing. I don't know. So it's two two of my heroes. We'll take it. Yeah, we'll we receive it, Lord. <laughs> Never thought of that, but maybe so. Um, there's but, a conference. Yeah, I mean, or a gathering. There's right a there. gathering. Cody, B- Cody, and, and then Bill speaks. <laughs> now, that would probably be heaven for me. I may just go ahead and start believing in the rapture again if that happened. Uh, <laughs> but I, I, you know, when I when when I think about. Uh, I, when I think about the the time with the Lord, I think I had to I think I had to disconnect from it, this is my set aside time, yeah, and move into there's never a time that's not yeah. set aside, yeah. And I think that's become a I think that's become a thing for me and a theme in my heart and life is to be able to say, uh, you know, we we're jealously guarding the presence and yes. carrying that. Yes. If, if I don't have that, man, I don't have anything to give to anybody. Yes. Even if I was in a one-on-one meeting in here or in a phone call, I can't of afford course. to minister to those people out of uh, a weariness, out of a, even out of my head, out of my so mind, good. out of my, my ability to strategize or come up with solutions. Um, it's gotta be by the spirit or, or it doesn't bear any fruit that remains, you know, anyway. Yeah. Do you, do you think to me too, I, I think that a man that does that, I, I used to always joke, I'd say, uh, Sometimes people love to have a leader who's led by the Spirit until they have a leader who's led by the uh-huh. Spirit. Yeah, it's true. You know? yeah, and so there's yeah, an element yeah. where I would think that there's a little bit, and I'm not saying you personally, but but in general, that that's initially in some form, maybe that would maybe even harder than being busy. Oh, it's a what? Does it's that make so sense? so much harder. Because, yeah. One, because you, the idea, you're, you're telling people no yeah, a lot. Well, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that's, okay, you know, yeah, but yeah, you have yeah. to get over that element. But right. then you're also just saying you're alone and you're, yeah. you're with yeah. your own thoughts yeah. and yourself absolutely. and the Lord a lot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And I think, I think um, you know, for me, by nature, busy is easy. Yeah. Uh, quiet is a discipline. Wow. And but I've now gotten to the point I'll be fifty years old this coming year. I've gotten to the point where I've tasted the fruit of the quiet, of the alone, of yeah. the listening to the point that I'm addicted to it. Yeah. Uh, but it is it is a lot easier by nature to I, I say this even I say uh, I watch people who the 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 principal way that they pray is read the scripture. Which is good. It's, sure. It's good. Of course. But it's so so much easier to read the Bible than it is to have a conversation with God. Yeah. And so yeah. you go, so I f- I'll find myself going, when I'm tired, I'll just want to read. Yep. My mind's tired, I just want to read. Sure. And you think, well, if your mind's tired, the last thing you want to do is read. No, the last thing you want to do is engage your heart so good. and have to have your spirit man really be in control of things. And so um, I'm just, I'm drinking from a refreshing well of communion and union with the Lord. That's why that word union is so big in my life. And with that, it's just become non-negotiable for me. Uh, Back to the Bill Johnson story, he said how, you know, how aware would Jesus have, have, have to have been to have a woman with an issue of blood touch the hem of his garment and perceive virtue went out of him? How, how aware do you have to be of what full feels like? That's not the way Bill said it. I'm sure he said it a lot more eloquently no, than that. That's powerful. And, I mean, she, he said, hold on. Somebody touched me. He said, everybody's touching you. He said, no, somebody touched me with intention. How do you know? Because I felt something come out of me. And I want to mm. be, be acutely aware mm. to when I'm not full. Mm. Because I am, I am, uh, know that I'm doing what I'm designed to do when I'm, the people around me are getting the overflow. They're getting spilled and splashed on based on a cup that's running over. Mm. And I want to stay in that posture. I don't I don't always do that as well as I should, but I'm becoming more and more aware of all right, something doesn't feel just right. And and rather than just saying, Oh, that's just a natural part of life, I go back and say, No, let me go get alone and and find out where I lost a, a quarter of a tank, an eighth wow. of a tank, you know, wow. maybe a sixteenth of a tank. Sure. And, um, endeavoring to do that, I've I've done the, I've done it better in Mobile, 
Uh, I think even li- the living in the neighborhood thing was important because it, it pushed me up here uh, all the time. Wow. Um, it was an important season for me and to be able to now go back out on that land. And cause I can get busy with that. I can get, sure. you know, horses running around and fences need to be built and stalls need to be cleaned. And, you know, even horses need to be ridden. And those are all things that I enjoy. I love that kind of work. I really do. I love it. Um, but at the same time, it can also be a distraction. Mm-hmm. And, um, I, I love that the Lord gives me the ability to escape, but I've even learned to escape with him. Like vacation used to be shut everything down and ignore everything that has to do with ministry. Now vacation has become a sacred space for me to, you know, walk on the beach or cruise in the mountains and really engage with him in, in a yeah. special way. Yeah. So, yeah. That's a fascinating thought. I've never – I mean, honestly, that's that's helping me to – I mean, that's a new thing to, to, for me to hear, the idea of guarding full. Mm-hmm. You're yep. guarding yep. your full. Yep. And when you feel that – because I know for me, I mean, it just – I have, I would say the majority of the time I would say, well, that may just be a normal part of life. Right. I think it's easy to categorize it that way. That's a great way to sort of turn your thoughts. You know what I mean? Well, I think people look at it and they go, well, you can't be on top of the world every second of every minute of every day. So sometimes you might just feel a little funky. Right. And I'm going, I don't don't see that in the life of Jesus. So good. When, When they can show me Jesus's bad day. You know, so good. When they can show me no, Jesus in a, in a in right. an emotional roller coaster ride, then, then that can become a standard for me. But I just feel like Jesus lived in this place with the Father. I know he did. He lived in this place with the Father, where wow. he he never didn't carry a sense of fulfillment. And um and and I'm I'm there. I'm as fulfilled as I've ever been in any other season in my life, and no other season really even uh, compares. The measure of fulfillment to just know that, you know, in coming here into Mobile and the, the staff, the team that we have, the family, what the Lord is doing um, is exactly what we're called to do. And uh, I, I want to bend my heart more toward what got us here instead of how to get to what's next. Well, and I think because I could easily go, we wow. need a new building, which right. which we do like yes. legitimately. Yes, we yes, need a new we, yes, we yes. could build two or three buildings just for our school. Yes. And then the Union University thing is exploding with interest. And and um, we need a new sanctuary to be able to hold the people. And we need more bathrooms. And, we need, and I think it's so easy to 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 shift over into CEO mode. Yes. Um, or CFO mode, whatever it may be, sure. versus, man, that's not what got us here. You know, what got us here is the, the life of union, the understanding of what the face-to-face, eye-to-eye, mouth-to-mouth lifestyle looks like. And then trusting the Lord really does um, add all the other things. Absolutely. The other things are additions, not pursuits. Yes. You know. do, you, do you feel, because, you know, I'm thinking of a person listening on the other side of this, and they're going... I'm just thinking now. I'm trying to play not devil's advocate, but sure. I'm trying no, to, you know, I get and I'm, it. Go, yeah. I'm going, I'm going, they're looking in and going, yeah, but you're having this move of God and things are increasing and blessing. But I would dare say, from my own journey as I'm growing and maturing and, 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 you know, that it is not things or those that bring that fulfillment, it's perspective. Yeah. And and there's a perspective. I would say that to anyone listening is what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. There's an there's a there's a a place of fulfillment for you yeah, right now. Absolutely. If your perspective is yeah. appropriate, yes. Because like you're saying, there's a million things you could do. Absolutely. Here, but your perspective is yes. one thing. Yes. Yeah. And I think that um, what we're doing here numerically is relatively small compared to other things I've been a part of in my life. You know, that's true that, that you have that's seen true. with me and of course, uh, uh, or seen, seen God do in our ministry in our life. I think that fulfillment is not based on, you know, well, you, you, you've got a tremendous move of God and, you know, lots of people are listening and connecting mm-hmm. and are giving or whatever mm-hmm. it may be. No, it was not that case. It was not the case. You know, when we came here to mobile, the, the church was, was very, very small. Mm-hmm. It was uh, less than a hundred people. Yeah, um, when we when we saw the move of the spirit begin to happen in South Carolina, there were sixty one people. Yes. in that first service, it wasn't many more than that here when we got yeah. to Mobile. Um, and the fulfillment did not come when more people showed up. Right, <laughs> it came because we knew we had, to the best of our ability, heard and obeyed yes. the word of the Lord to us. And He kisses it with presence, man. And that that's where the fulfillment is. Is is 
You know, if I'm if I'm with a if I'm by myself or just Tammy and I are together with the boys or or I'm with a handful of leaders and sons, I, I'm content. I'm fulfilled yeah. uh, because I believe we are doing what we're called to do, and we're recovering a very authentic Orthodox gospel uh, that's setting people free and getting them out of this religious stuff. And that, that just brings a great sense and source of fulfillment to my heart, you know, but I don't, I think it's easy for, I do, I do get where you're coming from, you know, as you identify with the listener who may go, yeah, you got things rocking and rolling and right. things are growing and things. Are no, we weren't content when they started growing. Yeah. Fulfillment wasn't there because we started growing. I just Fulf- think it's good for them to hear that. From yeah, you, for sure. You know? Fulfillment was when we were following the moving truck down here and didn't have yeah. any idea how this was going to yeah, turn out. Sure. But to the best of our ability, we believe that we yeah. heard and obeyed. Yeah. You know, doesn't mean it hadn't been difficult. Doesn't mean it hasn't been challenging. Yeah. But you can either take your focus off of his face and move it toward the challenge. So good. Or you can stay in that sense of thanksgiving. You know, the, the, the fascinating thing about thanksgiving for me is, you know, when Yeshua is thanking God outside the tomb of Lazarus, he's not alive yet. Hmm. But he said, it's right to be thankful right now with yeah. no evidence. Yeah. And a lot of people want to be thankful when they have a lot of evidence. That are grateful when they have a lot of evidence, or full of joy when they have mm-hmm. a lot of evidence. You know, mm-hmm. When Yeshua gets ready to multiply bread and fish, the thanksgiving is not given when there's 12 baskets left over. The thanksgiving is given when what he's holding mm-hmm. is not enough. Mm-hmm. It's clearly not enough. And he says, I thank you right now. And I think that's a key is thankful for what you have right now that's not enough. Mm-hmm. But I'm thankful because I believe I'm in the middle, middle of the plan of the Father, and He's here with me. Yeah, and that that's that's the sense of fulfillment. Wow, wow. Um, yeah, I mean it's so good. I'm so intrigued too, and uh, I don't know if, but I'm so intrigued. This being your 49th year, next year being your 50th year. This is just my own thoughts, and the thought of jubilee. Mm-hmm. And the scripture says, you know, every man in the, in Jubilee goes back to his family and yeah. his land. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. so I love what God is doing yeah, with you here, planning yeah. you here. Yes. You know what I mean? And just, yes. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing. Well, uh, we've gotten through fall. We're now into Christmas. Mm-hmm. Um, what are you? What are you, What's? What are you? What are you? Where? What are you feeling? What are you sensing? You know, for the new year, or for yep. the end of the year, or yep. what are you? You know, I heard you make that phrase earlier, you know, recovering the, the orthodox gospel mm-hmm. and setting people free. Yeah. Do you feel like we're just going deeper into some of those things? Do you Without feel, question. You know, what do you, what do you, what's on your heart? What well, do you sense? I, I think that what we're continually doing, and, and, and really this fall, a focus has been building the culture, you know, what I call the wineskin, mm-hmm. uh, making sure we really do have a new wineskin. Mm-hmm. Because I know we're being prepared for more. And structure is not about restriction. Structure is about being prepared to receive greater flow. So I've, I've returned even to some things I've taught or themes, I would say, more than mm-hmm. I've taught before mm-hmm. in light of some new revelation the Lord's given me and, and even in, in light of how it fits here um, to, to help the new crowd that we've had that's come in really get, you know, because it's the, the majority of the people here are not people that were with us in South Carolina. For sure. I mean, for sure, they're people that have moved from all over the place. Yes. And so just helping them re- make sure that they know here's some foundational things that are they're, they're pillars to our culture. And let's reinforce those things to make sure that as we move into 2024, I, I just have a sense this reunion weekend at the end of the year I do too. is the, one of the most important things we've ever done. I agree. You agree with that? hundred yeah. percent. You and I have not even talked about that, nope. but I mean, nope. I am carrying some expectation I, for that. I feel deal. great weight on it. Yeah, I do yep. too. I do too. Yep. Whew, man. Yep. And just a tremendous sense that the Lord is going to visit us in a way we've not experienced before. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of this culture building we've done in late September, all of October, all of November, all of December is setting us up to be able to handle a greater flow than we've experienced before. Um, And so, you know, I I, honestly, man, for me, it's more of the same. Mm-hmm. As, as yeah. strange as that may yeah. sound, it's like, no, it's what's good. God going to do in 24? What he did in 2023, but at a level we've never experienced before. <laughs> it's good. It's good. And, um, you know, this thing of returning to a patristic gospel of, you know, I, I had the thought early this morning. I, I was looking out over the land there and drinking a cup of coffee. And I, as I was, I had the thought this morning. I thought, how did we become a group of people? You know, John had a spiritual son by the name of Polycarp. Mm-hmm. 
Um, how did we become a group of people that are interested more in what, you know, John Calvin thought than we are wow. in what a spiritual son of John the Beloved thought? Yet most of us know, uh, we know most leaders really are very familiar with what John Calvin taught and believed, and, and I, I think John Calvin's amazing. Sure. Um, I, I don't think John Calvin was trying to start a, a branch of Christianity called Calvinism, mm-hmm. Um but I, I do think that, the, you know, if you read John Calvin's Institutes and you read them devotionally, it's beautiful. If you go in and you try to create a framework yeah. for a new religion out of it, then it's going to create a mess like everything does. Sure. But how far we moved away from the patristic mind, you know, to, to what would it be? You know, we, we talk about as John the Beloved, what would it be like to sit with Jesus, to, to put your head on his breast, to be able to identify mm. yourself mm. as the one whom Jesus loved? Hmm. That's his self-identification. Yeah, the one whom Jesus yeah. loved, uh, the one who puts his head on his breast, the one that we would now identify all of these years later as the beloved, yeah, apostle. Yeah, and then I, but but we've got his writings, but then we've also got Polycarp who sat with him. We've got Irenaeus, you know. We've got Athanasius. We've got these guys. Did they have it all? No. But to skip over what they learned right. by way of sitting at the feet of John the Beloved, right. who sit at the feet of Jesus, is just an error in every sense of the word. Sure. And so I feel like we're we're having to return and, and revision God in light of the patristic mind. Did they have it all? No. But I think it's wrong to think we've progressed. Wow. Uh, but, you know, when you're not seeing the fruit of the way the early church functioned as it relates to miracles, signs and wonders, mysteries, revelations, inheritance, I think you have to go back and begin to say, okay, instead of just assuming that we've moved forward because we have huge buildings and large crowds and sure. large followings and big seminaries and full seminaries, that we go, yeah, but where's the fruit of the change in the culture that they were seeing? You know, that, that it's said in the... Uh, it's said in the the Celtic saints that when St. Patrick was on the earth, there was no crime in the nation for seven years simply because he was present. Wow. It doesn't mean for seven years there weren't evil people, but it means for seven years evil was not allowed to operate because that man was present knowing who he was in the earth. Wow. That's what I mean when I say theosis. Absolutely. There's a Christ-like man in the earth, and the way the early church functioned is is something that I feel like – is not not just a model for how we're supposed to live. I think we've 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 seen that. We've been unwilling to go there, but we've seen it. But I think it's a model. I think it's a model for how we're supposed to believe. Mm. And so, returning to the patristic mind has been important. It's something I did many years mm. ago in just my classes on patristics and studies sure. and writings and and things. But to to return there now and go, I want to understand what Polycarp learned from John. Yes. And Irenaeus learned from Polycarp and, you know, Origen or Athanasius. Do I believe everything that they believe? Of course not. And I don't believe everything, anything er, anybody believes. Of course. Everything anybody believes. Of course. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I don't believe what I believed of course. five years ago. Of course. Uh, but I love the journey of returning to how did these people envision God? How how did they envision the Trinitarian life? How did they envision the Trinitarian relationship? What, what did salvation mean to them before we turned it into the, the ability to escape forensic judgment? Sure. You know? So what, what do you do you think for for, you know, for the for the random person hearing that and going, going, yeah, you know, what, what do you think it takes in the heart and mind mm-hmm. to be willing to go? OK, I, I'll go back yeah. there and look at that. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you do you see a total laying down? Yeah. Do you see a total adjustment, a total sense of shifting and, you know, in, in thoughts and, and just a willingness mm-hmm. to to. Let it be stripped away. Yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, you know, you mentioned the heart and the mind. Yeah, and what I always say, Brent, is is revelation, real revelation, hits the tuning fork of your spirit. Wow! And everything in your spirit goes, yes, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah. The problem is, it's got to survive the migration. Yeah. From the tuning fork of the spirit to the mind yes and the mind is where we've been trained these are our doctrines this is what we believe is right and you've got people as 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 clear as i believe the bible argues against a pre-tribulation rapture 
Yes. You've got people that would rather die than change their thinking about that. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. I think the I think the uh, the kingdom man is willing to have his whiteboard completely erased. Wow. And to be able to go rather than fighting to believe that what I believe is right, I want to believe what is right. Oh, that's strong. And and for me, I, I had that thing in me that wanted to believe that what I believed was right. Same. And when I went through the wilderness, I came out going, no, I'd rather believe what's right than believe that what I believe is right. Because what I believed that I wanted to believe was right was working well for me in, in, in public, but it wasn't in private. And that's where you had to go. If there is not peace that surpasses all understanding, if there is not joy, that's unspeakable and full of glory, I have an obligation, a responsibility to return and ask myself, you know, why are so many leaders follow falling? Why, why do we have this pattern where unfortunately, heartbreakingly, we're not even surprised anymore. That's right. To hear that there's been another moral failure. That's and right. you're going, man, I'm not, there's not a stone in my hand when I say that. Of course. But there has to be a more excellent way. And I think part of it is to return back, not to this being tortured with the rules you know, but being in love with Jesus, man, yeah. is to know the eyes of Jesus instead of, you know, being forced to become experts in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, to use the Bible as this great directional indicator yeah. towards the nature of God. Yeah. You know, uh, and so I, I think that there is, a, you know, to answer the question, I think that there is has to be a willingness in us to go. Let's let's start again. And I think that's what repentance is. Yeah. And I don't think repentance is a one-time event because it's not a forensic thing. Sure. It's it's not about legal matters. It's not about you getting your books in order. Repentance is about us changing the way we think and passionately returning to God. And when you passionately return to God, you're going to get an education that's not going to fit with everything you learned in seminary. Sure. And uh, I, I, I have be, I have been called to take that path uniquely. I understand that, but also to lead you know spiritual sons and leaders that are coming after me to be able to go, hey man, let, let's be willing to take the inevitable criticism and persecution that is coming, especially in the part of the world we live in. Sure. This is not what's being taught generally on Sunday morning. Of course. And when people hear it, I think their first response is, oh, my God, could this really be true? Yeah. And and to me, that's what good news should do. That's what wow. the gospel should do. Mm. It should be too good to be true. Mm. And then from there, the outworking of that for me has become holiness like I've always wanted. Sanctification, Absolutely. like I've always wanted. Yes. Discipline, like I've always wanted. Yes. That I could not get there through fear of punishment. It wasn't possible. Wow. Perfect love had to come cast out all fear, for fear carries with it the anticipation of punishment. And the individual who is still fearing punishment has not yet been perfected in love. And when love's perfection comes, the last thing on your mind is judgment. The first thing on your mind is I get more union today than I had yesterday. And that's why I think we can look at 2024 and go more of the same. Yeah. Do you, do you think, do you think in your story, it sure does sound like the wilderness was necessary. It, it, it was, it was yeah. not optional. Yeah, no, no. And I, um, I think the degree of wilderness people walk through varies. Wow. I think for a leader that has been called to pioneer everything, the, anything, the wilderness is inevitable. Why do you? Why do I believe that? Jesus had to have one. You know, John goes into the wilderness. Jesus goes to find John in the wilderness, hmm. and then gets sent more deeply into the wilderness than John is in because hmm. it's in the wilderness where the Spirit leads him into the wilderness. Mm-hmm. So I think the degree of what he was called to bring in the earth necessitated a greater journey into the wilderness. Um, and it's there that you get really solidified in who God is and you get really solidified in who you are because every temptation of the wilderness was an, if you are temptation, Wow! what's the last thing Jesus heard the father say before the spirit led him into the wilderness? This is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Or you could translate that. This is my beloved son in whom my soul finds its highest delight, Wow, man. And from that declaration, he goes into the wilderness. And what's the first thing the enemy says to him in the wilderness? If you are the son of God, yes. 
And the wilderness can make you question the last thing you heard, regardless of how clearly you heard it. Wow. You are my beloved son. And the enemy comes with an if you are. If you are. If you are. Turn the stones into bread. Cast yourself off the pinnacle of the temple. Bow down and worship me. And it's it's in that hour that I believe that Yeshua is being prepared to not just have a revelation of who he is, but to manifest the revelation of who he is. And I think even a lot of people in our, our world that have like known who they are in Christ have not been able to bring about the manifestation of that. Mm. The city set on a hill, the light of the world. Doesn't mean they haven't done great things. Doesn't sure. mean they haven't built great ministries. Sure. You'll build a greater ministry knowing who you are than you did not knowing who you were. Mm. But the goal is not build a great ministry. The goal yeah. for me is the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord covers the earth as the waters cover the sea. He gives us nations as our inheritance. And our children become oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, the oh, leaves yes, of their do. trees bringing forth the healing of the nations. Come on. You know? Yeah. So uh, I do think I do think the wilderness is necessary. You know, we St. John of the Cross called it the dark night of the soul. Hmm. And I, it was hell, man. But I can, I can now say thank you for it. And I didn't do a good job of saying thank you in it. Mm -hmm. But I can now say thank you for it. Because there's a meekness I don't think I ever would have gotten to. There's a patience. I was not a patient man. And there's a patience in me. There's a patience with people. Mm-hmm. There's a willingness oh, to step back that. and let them go through their own process. Mm-hmm. I love people with the love of the Lord. And people are not a means to fulfill my own dreams anymore, but I'm, I feel like I'm here more to help them see their dreams fulfilled. Beautiful. And so I think any man that's really been through the dark night of the soul it gives you a really, really I just feel like there's a solid revelation in my heart of how much he loves me and how committed he is to seeing that there is no part of me that still believes there's a dark side of him. For this is a message we heard from him in the beginning that is still ringing in our ears. Our God is pure light, and in him there is no trace of darkness. And I believe without my own dark night of the soul, I would still believe there was a trace of darkness in God. And I could categorize it under sovereignty or providence or transcendence. Or, yeah, yeah, that may look dark, but we just don't understand. No, it is dark. Some of it is dark. And now that's not the God that I know on the other side of this wilderness. So... I think it had to be as dark as it had to be because of my own stubbornness. Hmm. I don't think it had to get that dark. And I don't think God was the author of the darkness. Hmm. I just think God was utterly committed to what I had cried out for. I want to be real, man. I I don't want any of this to be a show. I don't want any of this to be about clicks and about likes and about following and about money and about fame. I don't want any of that in me. And it was. It was. I couldn't take criticism. And now when people criticize me, I've been able to get in this posture. Not that I like it, but I've been able to get in this posture of being able to empathize with how much I fought against grace. Mm -hmm. God, how much I fought against Mm -hmm. grace. So I know I'm just rambling, but my heart is thankful that the Lord was willing to say, I mean, I I stand here today and I can say all things do work together for good. And if it was just the good things he was talking about, then he wouldn't have had to say all things. That's right. All things is because a lot of the ingredients that have brought me to the meal that I'm eating in the presence of the Lord today is, was, was, was dark, painful things, uh, yeah, I see the kindness of the Lord so so deeply. Even like when you're saying today, you say today I look back on it and I'm thankful. I can say thank you, but in the middle, I I, I could I didn't say thank you. But even in the not having a thank you, He held you. Yes, He did. He held you. He did. And I think that's such a He did. It's such a. Uh, whew, 
it's such a uh, a reminder of the goodness of God and and the ability to be authentic when you're walking yeah. through that, and He's still with you. He's still there. Yeah, and He's still kind. And uh, yeah, and I had people, man, that I could fall apart in front of. Yeah, Johnson Norton, you know. Yeah, they're with me every day. My wife, they're with me every day, and I was falling apart. I, 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 you know, I thought I was dying. Yeah, uh, and I thought I was going to leave my kids behind. Yeah, and uh, to come out on the other side of that now and go, I will fear no evil. Amen. For Amen. thou art with me. Your rod and your staff, you comfort me. You do prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And today, you know what I feel, Bren? I feel like goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I don't have to escape ministry anymore. Yeah. Because it's just integrated into the whole. Yeah. Of this dream that we live. Yeah. We live a dream. And I'm 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 just like uber thankful for that. And even the difficult part of it. Yeah. You know. I I, th- I just think that this is um I just feel permission. You know, I feel permission in this moment for for people that would hear this. To go, just walk on through it. Yes, just, absolutely. Just walk on through. Absolutely. It. You know, don't kick against the goats. Just walk. <laughs> just walk on through it. Yeah. He's with you. Yeah. And he's he's not giving up on you. He's no. not going to quit on you. Um, I feel like that wilderness thought would even keep people from. They're they're scared of that stripping away. Yeah. But I think that your life is a witness, man. Yeah. To me, to tie, to that on the other side, if you if you walk on through it, he's he's good. He's good, man. He's and I, good, and I'm I am filled with peace. Yeah, and I was not a man yeah. of peace. Yeah, I, the things that the religious world loved about me the most was war. One hundred percent. Microphone in my hand and go after it. Yes, and I'm I'm looking at this place of peace I'm in in my life right now and go, but man, I got. Yesterday, I got a testimony of two people that are being healed of cancer that both had been given a death sentence. One was Devin and Zion Wallace, Devin and Kevin, such dear friends of ours. And Devin's become a, I don't know if she's a friend, a daughter. Sometimes she's my hero. But Devin and Zion came to be in service with us, drove all the way down. Yeah. And sat in service and drove all the way home and got home yep. at like four in the morning. But one of the things she asked me to do is she has a dear intercessor in her life named Amy who had, over the last two years been dying of cancer. She asked us to pray over a prayer cloth. <laughs> so last week we prayed over a prayer cloth. And yesterday I got a voice memo that she was sitting with Amy. <laughs> she had that prayer cloth tied around her ankle. <laughs> and for the first time in two years, numbers that have been skyrocketing in the wrong direction, have started to fall, not just because of that prayer cloth, but because of many, many prayers. And her numbers had now fallen 14,000 points, and it's the first good report she'd gotten in two years. And Devin was sitting with her, and she said, I had to call you and testify, because it's because I know you're contending for cancer to be healed. And she said, she's on the way. And the doctors told her, the cancer in your body is dying. I've got a dear friend in Texas, one of my best friends on the planet. I got a report that the tumor that's been growing in his face, it started to shrink. And I was just with him a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. His wife texted me this morning. It's happening. The tumor started to shrink. He can use his mouth again. He can chew food again. And you're going, these are in the last 24 hours. Mm. And Elijah and I were riding in the truck yesterday, and I played him the voice memo of cancer being healed. <laughs> and I said, son, this is why we're alive. Amen. We're not alive to build some big church and have some, you know, fancy lifestyle with all these material possessions. Who cares, man, if if they can't tie prayer cloth around their ankle and believe God's going to heal them of cancer? 
then we need to throw some doctrines out the window yeah. and go back to some some understanding of the nature of God that can Come actually on. get somebody healed. Instead, of, the only message we have for them is teach them, I hope they suffer well. Yeah. He suffered well. Yes, he did. And I accept his sufferings as my Come own. On. Come on. And we're going to move into some victory. Brian, I feel some victory on the other <laughs> side of these wilderness. I prophesy that to men, that women that are listening to this, that are in the middle of what I may be on the other side of. <laughs> and I say to you, the victory will be well worth it. This is not for nothing. This is not happening to you because of your past sins. This is not happening to you because God finally got tired of you and got sick of dealing with you and threw his hands up and took his hands off of you. No, this is because you've cried out for more. Mm. And the Father has heard the cry for more, and he's answering the cry for more. And you're going to come out on the other side of this shining in a way that you never would have been able to shine had you not had to walk through the dark night of the soul. This is love, too. I hear the Lord say, this is love too, and all is grace. In Jesus' name, I believe it. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe this is why we didn't have a podcast for a little while. It's building toward this. Absolutely. Building toward this. Absolutely. Hola, Mariki, Hola. I'm just not going to ever show up again with the message of try harder. So I'm good, done. Sir. I'm done telling the world that what they what their problem is is they don't want to be right with God. Yes, they do. Yeah. Yes, they do. Yes, they do. But the answer is not try harder, Bren. For me, the answer is surrender more. And that's how the wilderness works. Surrender all the more. Trust all the more. Yield all the more. And you come out on the other side of it with a union that is impossible without a necessary measure of yieldedness. And I just want to stay in that yielded place, man. I love his eyes. <laughs> I love when we walk in that room and there's kids from three years old to, oh, yes. you know, 23 years old. Filling and there are hundreds front. of them. And they're yeah. just in the front, Come laying on. out in the presence of God. Come on. And that doesn't happen once a year during youth camp. That's right. It can happen on a Monday morning before school starts. That's, right. That's just right. so grateful. So grateful. Watching our kids dance before the Lord. Oh, yes. And they're not smothered with this try harder message. They know they're loved. And even when they fall, they fall forward. It's not that they don't make mistakes, mm. it's not that they don't do teenage stuff. Mm -hmm. That's part of their maturation process. But now they don't fall into shame and feel like they have to earn their way back into right standing with God. They fall mm. into mercy that mm. is a bottomless ocean. Mm. And they find their way closer to him than they would be had they never struggled. Hmm. And that's just not the religion I grew up with. Hmm. I always felt like I had to earn my way back. Yeah. Fast my way back. Yeah. Pray more, Absolutely. read more, study more, worship yes. harder, want Absolutely. it more, hate sin more. Yeah. Tried it all, man. I tried the whole gamut. And the thing that's brought me into a place of wholeness, which I believe is the aim of the gospel, yes. is to make us whole. Absolutely. The thing that's brought me into wholeness is... When I was falling apart and I stunk and I felt worthless, he held me in a way he never had held me before. Hmm. That word, that Greek word is hoptomai, where it says he touched the leper. It's the one of the worst translations in the Bible is touch. Yeah. I remember you teaching on that. Hoptomai yeah. means he adhered himself yeah. to him. He clinged mm. to him. He took his rotting flesh and he held it in a way that it is a Jewish idiom for sexual intercourse. He touched him. Mm. He didn't touch him. Mm. We sang, I had a dream the other night. <laughs> I had a dream. I was with my dear friend, Stephanie Gretzinger, and she was standing against the wall, and my dad was standing next to her, and I was standing in front of her. And she was singing, and she took a break, and all of a sudden, my dad, who's, who's not a singer, but he is a saint, mm -hmm. he began to sing. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And Stephanie would look at my dad with these wide eyes, and she'd look back at me, and I knew she was communicating to me. I've never heard this before. Mm -hmm. And I knew in the dream the fathers were singing. It was my dad. Mm. Oh, he touched me. <laughs> and oh, the joy oh, that floods my soul. <laughs> Something happened, and now I know he touched me. And every time I hear the word touch, I think of hop to my when I felt like my flesh was rotting and my world was falling apart, he adhered himself to me. Mm. And he clinged to me and he would not let go. And I think it's a word for somebody listening today. Mm. 
that you feel as worthless as you've ever felt. You feel of no value whatsoever, mm-hmm. and it looks mm-hmm. like everything's falling apart. Mm-hmm. And I tell you, friend, you just brace yourself. Matter of fact, don't brace yourself. <laughs> just yield. He's going to hold you. And this is what I've learned, Brent. If I can let him hold me, I can let him carry me. Mm-hmm. And he carries me right back into that circle dance I was born for. So, whoa, man, I feel this so strong in my heart today. Mm-hmm. I just feel like even as people are listening to this, they're going to feel him wrap his arms around them in a really mm-hmm. unique way. I live for that embrace. Mm-hmm. And we need leaders who have experienced that embrace, that this is not coming out of their mind. It's not coming out of their gift. It's not coming out of their talent. It's not coming out of some motive to be seen and recognized and honored. It's just an overflow of him having held us when we didn't feel like we had anything of worth to give. And he adhered himself to me in that season. He adhered himself to me in that season. Hmm. And I, I feel like for somebody who said, man, you, you, this is what I'm in is so dark. I, I want to tell you, it's the size of the assignment. If you feel like you're losing your mind, it's the size of the assignment. If you feel like I don't know how much more of this I can take, it's the size of the assignment. And when the Lord brought that word to me in the middle of what I was going through, through my dear friend, Dutch Sheets, would say to me over and over again in that season, this is about what you're called to carry. Wow. (laughs) This is about what you're called to carry. Wow. Oh, I'm thankful for those words from Dutch during that season. He would look at me and say, this is about what you're called to carry. And I know what he meant now. Then it's so hard to see it, but I held on to it because I said, if this is going to set my children and my children's children free and and the children of my sons and daughters in the earth, spiritual sons and daughters free, then let's do it. And let's go through this. Let's get to the other side. Gethsemane wasn't about Gethsemane. Gethsemane was about the other side Hmm. for the joy that was set before him. He endured. And I speak endurance to somebody listening to this podcast right now. Hmm. Scripture says you have need of endurance so that after you've done the will of God, you may be able to obtain the promise. What is what you're going through about the promise? And it's a big promise. Hmm. Therefore, it's going to take a high measure of endurance. But I want to tell you what I learned, friend. Hmm. Endurance is grace. If you operate in endurance, you're doing it by way of grace. So I release the grace for endurance to come to you right now in Yeshua's name. The grace for endurance. That old song, it's funny you quoted the whole the whole chorus except for the very last line and the very last line is something happened and now i know he touched me and this is the last line and he made me whole made me whole that's the best part and yes he made me whole that's where wholeness comes from yeah it's not having all our doctrine in order yeah it's the hop to my yeah it's the adhering himself to mm. this is where wholeness comes from and i think whew, Man, hmm. Thomas, <laughs> touch hither the print of the nail in my hand hmm. and thrust your hand into my side and be hmm. not faithless but believing. And I feel like the Lord is saying that to some people right now, saying with what I've gone through, I don't know how to believe anymore. I don't think, Tom, you've heard me teach this several times hmm. over the years, Brim, but I don't think Thomas's problem was doubt. I think Thomas's problem was pain. Yeah. For Thomas... The one who's called the twin. When Jesus got ready to go back into Judea and the disciples said, Master, as of late, they sought to stone you and you are going to go thither again. And Thomas said, let us go with him that we may die also. Mm -hmm. I don't think Thomas had a doubt problem. I think Thomas had believed to such a level that when things did not work out the way he thought they were going to work out, he hurt too much to believe. Mm hmm. And I've always said, what do you need when it hurts too much to believe? You need a God who can walk through walk walls, walls, man. And the doors being shut, Jesus stood in the <laughs> midst of them. And even to some people listening, you've shut the door. You don't even know if you want to believe wow. anymore. You don't even want to know if you want to believe for the supernatural because you prayed for that sick person and had to do the funeral anyway. Mm. You prayed for the family member and had to attend the funeral anyway. 
and you don't even know if you want to believe anymore. You don't know if you can believe anymore. The door's being shut. The door does not have to be open for Yeshua to stand in the midst of them. Doors being shut, Jesus stood in the midst of them. What do you need when it hurts too much to believe? You need a Jesus who can walk through walls and let you touch the print of the nails in his hand where the spear went in his side saying, this is how much I love you. Now you can believe again. You believe again because of my scars. My scars are the evidence that how will he who did not spare his own son but delivered him up for us all, not also freely with him give us all things. And this is where you get your blank slate, man. This is where all your doctrine stuff can't stand the test. Mm -hmm. And you come out on the other side of it going, this is not, the cross was not about a a penal substitutionary atonement. The cross was about love, Mm -hmm. man. The cross was about love. And the blood of Jesus is not so that God can love us. The blood of Jesus is because God loves us. Blood is not what gives God the ability to love you or the judicial right to love you. It's because of love. For God so loved that he gave. And I just hope people feel that love today. I release that love Mm -hmm. today. That embrace. That embrace. Mm -hmm. I was going through such a neurological, physical battle during that season. And I would feel, as I would sit and meditate, feeling like I was losing my mind over this thing. My body just would not work. I couldn't zip my zipper. I couldn't hold a toothbrush. I mean, I don't go into a lot of the details of that, mm-hmm. but it, it was hell, man. Mm-hmm. And I would feel Jesus come and kiss my brain, come and kiss my neurology. And I would just sit there and just say, then how can I not be well? How can I not be whole? And to come out on the other side of that now and go, none of these things move me. None of these things move me. We're going to continue to contend. We're going to continue to contend. We want more prayer cloths wrapped around more ankles. Yes, we do, sir. More tumors disappearing. Yes, we do, sir. More on. cancers dying in their body, Lord. That's where we're headed. It's fascinating when you were, I just put this together, when you were on your trip to Texas, we were having our prayer meeting here, our normal Tuesday yeah, morning yeah. prayer. And uh, I'd never said these words before here but I felt like the Holy Spirit told me to pray and I did it over the mic in, with the group yeah. that this would be a cancer free zone come on man and I, it's just interesting oh, I'm putting that together on, that there's yes. a yes. you know that people would walk on this yes, property on. nobody would have to touch them <laughs> yes, nobody Lord. get any credit but the presence of the Lord <laughs> yes Lord and that that, uh, that diseases would die yes. on this ground yes I believe that stuff. I do too, man. I believe in it, man. I do too. It's time. It is time. It's time. It's time for us to quit having excuses. You know, what a a irresponsible doctrine of cessation. 100%. God quit doing miracles because you can't do them. That's right. No. God didn't change. We changed. Yes. And when we return back to the gospel that is full enough of grace, it'll be full enough of power. Wow. When we have a gospel that is full enough of grace, it will be full enough of power. Thank you, Lord. As long as it's our works and our striving, it'll be impotent. But when mm. all is grace, mm. there's necessary power for breakthrough. Mm. I believe it. And I believe I feel us, don't you? I mm-hmm. feel us moving in that direction wow. where nothing mm. feels impossible. Mm. I would sit with my friend who had this obviously unbelievably vis- visual tumor. And I would sit there and just in my mind, I would watch it disappear. And I was driving home and I said, Lord, I hurt that my friend is hurting. And I said this to the Lord. I said, Lord, and I know you could change that with a thought. And the Lord spoke to me and so, said, so can you. Mm. And I want you to change it with a thought. Mm. I want you to see him whole. I want you to envision that. I want you to have, you know, what Joe Dispenza calls a clear intention. And when you have a clear intention and that clear intention is followed by a real emotion. Mm. So I would visualize that tumor melting and the joy we would all have when it happened. And I believe now we're experiencing the fruit of that. Mm. I had never seen Amy before when I prayed over that prayer cloth, but I envisioned what I believe she looks like. Mm. And I begin to see her rejoicing and jumping up and down, Mm. holding hands in a circle with the ladies that have prayed 
prayed faithfully mm. for her to come out on the other side of this. One of our daughters here in the family, I've, I, 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 the way I pray for her, um, she wants to be called honey one day when she's a grandmother. She's way too young to be a grandmother now. But I envision her with white hair mm. sitting on a porch, bouncing two grandbabies, mm. one on each knee, mm. and them just smiling because they're with honey. Mm. And I'm, I, you know, when 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 my daughter Carson was going through the cancer diagnosis, I would mm-hmm. visualize her bouncing a baby boy on her knee. That she does bounce on her mm-hmm. knee now. And we got to be quit quit making excuses and creating doctrines Come around on. those excuses. Come on. And we've got to be able to serve a God that is big enough that he can cause his power to be at work in and through us. And I just want a grace big enough that it has to come with power. It has to come with power because grace is an empowerment. Yes, it is not an empowerment to follow the rules, man. That's right. Empowerment to see a cancer free zone. Yes. I love that. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. You know, I hear this, and I, I just had, and, and you know from my background, but I have this, this it's, a, it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's faith. It's going it's to faith. happen. Yes. You know, I believe it. I do, too. I believe I it. I do, too. Yeah. I do, too. I don't think we've seen a drop of what we'll see on this land, on this 96 acres. Oh, I agree, man. 500 I, more. I, I agree. I agree. I, I just, it's, it's. I agree. It's. Uh, I want cabins. Yeah. All over this land, yeah, along yeah, the water, yeah. for people that have been told stage four, yeah. go get your affairs in order. Yeah. I, I want them to be able to come and sit mm-hmm. and listen to the music mm-hmm. and hear the frequency of wholeness mm-hmm. and have people hold them, mm-hmm. hug them, love on them, mm-hmm. get the shame out, hear this message over and mm-hmm. over and over again. Mm-hmm. I, I dream of it. I, when you, but right before you said that, I said, that I, I, you know, you... You try to be careful, but it's things I feel. I go, they'll bring the sick here. Yeah, absolutely. They'll That's bring, what we they'll want. They'll bring yeah, them here. Exactly. And for that purpose. You or, know, you know Oral Roberts had a, a, a section in the back of the tent just for the terminally ill. He didn't even put them, Brent, in the main service. He put them in a section of the tent in the back, and he just had people. <laughs> he just had people walk back and forth in the terminal room mm. and tell miracle stories mm. of what they had already seen. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see these things yeah. happen. And yeah. these miracle stories are going to become fuel mm-hmm. for us to be able to say, what do we got? We've got a, a lady down here staying in one of our cabins on the water, just so to, so to speak. And mm-hmm. she's got stage four cancer and been told the doctors can't do anything. Then we send a lady who had stage four cancer, mm-hmm. who's completely whole. Mm-hmm. And she tell the story. Mm-hmm. And that prophecy begins to testify Absolutely. to that person. You're going Absolutely. to be fine. Yes. You're going to be fine. Yes. You're going to be fine. Yes. Yes, the, the several times I was with you, that was the language I gave you in that season. Yep. You will, you yep. are going to be yep. fine. Absolutely, yes. You know? And I, and I, I, there were in the darkness of that. I wanted to believe that was true. Of course. Before I could come out of it, of I had to believe that was true. Yeah. I had to believe you saying that to me was as clear as any verse in the Bible. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I know people that are going through it. Like sometimes in those settings, I I wouldn't be afraid to say it. But you, you, I so believed it yeah. that I wanted you to so believe yeah, exactly. it. And you have that exactly. feeling like yeah. if yeah. I say it, you know, but yeah. you yeah. have to tell yeah. it sometimes yeah. no, to people. I, absolutely. Just say it to absolutely. You know yeah. what I mean? Yep. Yeah. Yep. yep. Wow. And that, and I think that's, uh, I think that's one of the things that I learned is, hmm. you know, somebody had a dream when I was going through that of me with gray hair and grandkids mm-hmm. and the whole thing. And I could either go, well, I hope that's true. Right. Or I could go, no, that's absolutely true. Yes, yes, and, yes. and I decide whether it's true or not. Yes. yes. Multitudes, multitudes yes. in the valley of decision. Wow. Choose wow. life. Absolutely. Choose death. Yes. Choose blessing. Choose cursing. Yes. Under an inferior covenant, they had a choice. Yes. How much more do we have? Come on. With Jesus having carried our diseases oh, and infirmities on. for us. And I just decided in that health crisis, if he, if he had carried this away, I wasn't going to carry it. I wasn't going to have it. Wow. And I let him carry it away. And Powerful. I think there's this thing where we want to carry it with him. And he says, no, you cast your care on me. Mm. I care for you. The yoke and the burden because I have for you I is easy and light you. because yeah. I care for you. Yep. Mm. And I think in, in crisis, we always question care. Does he really care? I was reading the verses this morning. Lord, if you're willing. A crossing the water. Yeah. 100. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Lord, yes. if you're willing. Was there this past weekend? Yep. 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 Lord, if you're willing. Yeah. And that's it. It's a, it's a great crossing over. 
It's Amen. a great crossing over. And and the land that you find your feet on when you get to the other side is just trust. Yeah. Just trust. You know, it's interesting about even what you're saying and is in that passage where there he tells them, Let's go to the other side, the windstorm arises. Their question to him is, Do you not care that, that we are that perishing? we're perishing? Yes. And um but what is funny about you saying it is on the other side, the land they landed on, a man full of a legion of demons yeah, healed. Exactly. Jairus' daughter yeah, healed. healed. Yes. Woman, yep. Raised from the dead. Raised from the dead. Yep. Yep. Woman with the issue of blood healed. healed. Yep. It's just yep. there's yep. something on the yep. other side. Yep. It's beautiful. You know, when he when he cancels the storm <clears throat> for them, peace be still, they say, what manner of man is this mm -hmm. that even the wind and the waves mm -hmm. obey him? When he walks on the water, gets in the boat, and carries them to the other side, the master carest thou not that we perish. Yeah. When they get to the other side, they say, surely this man is the son of God. Wow. Storm number one, they had the revelation, he's unlike any other man. Mm. What manner of man? Storm number two, he's more than a man. Beautiful. This man's the son of God. Beautiful. And sometimes it wasn't storm number one. Sometimes it wasn't storm number two. But he's trying to get us to the revelation of who he really is. Come on. And what his father is actually like. Come on. And the father is exactly what's revealed to us in Jesus. And I think once that got in my heart, I, I had to be healed. Yes. Because I, I was, I was, I, you know, how many, how many people approached Jesus for healing? And he said, no, it's not for you. Mm -hmm. Sorry. You got too much sin in your life. Mm -hmm. you, know, you deserve it. Yep. It's a sowing and reaping. I can't, I can't, I can't override sowing and reaping. Yep. And you got, you know, I mentioned last week about the woman taken in adultery. You know, mm -hmm. does, does, never even says she's sorry. <laughs> it's true. But he looks it's her in true. her eyes, man. And when she sees those eyes, she knows I have the power to never do this again. Why? Because grace is empowerment. And when she experienced radical mm. grace, she experienced the power to change her desires, to change what she felt like she was worth. Mm. Her morality shifted because of grace. And we're scared to death. Grace is going to give people boy, a license boy, for immorality. Boy. It was grace that shifted her morality. It was mercy that mm. shifted her morality. It's been the same thing with me. Mm -hmm. It's not my discipline and my striving and my fasting. I fasted and fasted and fasted and wanted, you know, the power of temptation to be broken mm -hmm. off of my life. It wasn't until I said yes to grace that I really began to experience a change mm. in appetite and desire mm. to the point that things I felt like I had to radically discipline myself against now. I couldn't imagine myself doing those things, mm -hmm. looking at those things, listening to those sure. things, wanting those things, fantasizing about those mm -hmm. things. Can't imagine that now. now. I'm thankful. Grace is power. Well, I don't think there's a better stopping point than that, right? Whew, man. Grace is power. I want to go lay in the sanctuary floor now for a couple okay. hours. Yeah, I do it. <laughs> yes. Well, I will say this. This is what I... In my heart, when I thought I would love to sit down with this man, mm -hmm. sort of pull the veil back, and uh, I think today is the greatest example of what I wanted this podcast mm -hmm. to be. Thank you, Lord. And uh, thank you, Lord. Uh, these moments of sharing and opening of the heart, and I do. I believe more than any other sort of thing podcast we've done. I feel more grace on this podcast for transformation for the listener than Thank you, Lord. Other. Thank you, Lord. I feel, I feel the presence of God oh, yeah. on these words and on this time for the listener that uh, there's a door open for you, yes. and you're going to walk through it. Yes, Lord. And he's going to be with you. Yes, Lord. And you're going to get to the other side, and oh, all will be grace and goodness Jesus. and mercy will follow yes. you. All the days of your life, just Sweet as it does, has done with Pops here. Yes, Lord. And uh, his story is not just so we can celebrate it. His story becomes our story. And we will testify of the same reality. He yes, Lord. We got to the other side and realized all is grace and God is good. And uh, we love you. Those that listen to this, yes, we, we love you. Yes, we do. This, the, I, I, I can say this is not for clicks or likes. This is for yeah, this exactly thing right, right here that's, that's happening right, in man. this room today. 100%. That people could encounter 100%. something. 100%. And uh, in the presence of God. Oh, and uh, 
We love you. Every leader listening to this, you matter to God. You matter to God. You matter to us. And uh, we want to see you walk in the wholeness and fullness that you were designed to. And I feel faith in Mark say, and you will. Yes, you will. You will. Yes, you will. You will, you will, you will. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name. name. In Jesus' name. Anything else, sir? No, sir. Okay. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name, we'll see you next time. Yes, we love you.